Hello and welcome to Fishing Tutorials. In this video, we're going to cover how to tie a stiff end rig, but also how to get the best out of it and what angling situation uh, we'd recommend using it in. Firstly, what is the stiff hinge rig? Well, I will just say that some people call it the hinge stiff rig and others call it the stiff hinge rig. Uh, which one of those it actually is, I don't really know, but I believe Terry says stiff hinge rig. Yeah, so we'll go with that. Anyway, it's basically a chod rig, but it has an additional like, section of line, a little boom that increases the length of the rig, kicks it out away from your lead setup. Quite a lot of people uh, talk about the stiff hinge rig as a good way of avoiding smaller species like uh, bream, roach, and stuff like that. The quite crude nature of the rig certainly makes it uh, less likely to be picked up by bream. To tie up the stiff hinge rig, you will need the following items. A spool of chod rig material. This is mouth trap. A chod pattern of hook. A chod swivel. A rig ring a ring swivel, a spool of boom material. You've got two options for this boom material. We prefer to use something like this coated braid when fishing in deeper silt, uh, and we'll actually use fluorocarbon if we're fishing over firmer, uh, clearer, hard lake beds. You'll also need some pop-ups, a spool of bait floss, a baiting needle, a pair of scissors, a lighter, and you may also need some rig putty to uh, balance out the weight of your pop-up. Firstly, take an eight inch length of mouth trap. This will form your chod section of the stiff hinge rig. You'll notice this is a very stiff and wiry material and it does take a little practice to get used to using it. Next, you need to thread your hook onto the line, but make sure you thread it on the correct way. With the longer tag end, whip the hook on using a knotless knot. Wrap the line around the shank of the hook seven or eight times before threading it back through the eye of the hook to secure the knot in place. Thread a chod swivel onto the line and secure it in place with a three turn blood knot. The length of this section is up to you, but we prefer to tie these around one to three inches long. The length of this section determines how far your pop-up will be off the bottom. Once tightened down, trim the tag end. If you need to learn how to tie the blood knot and indeed other knots, head over to our dedicated knot playlist on our channel. Next, thread a rig ring onto the tag end and form a D shape. Thread the end of the tag through the hook eye and cut it down until you have around a centimeter still poking through the eye of the hook. To secure the rig ring in place, you need to use a lighter to blob the material so that it can't pull back through the eye. Next, take around 10 inches of your chosen boom material. Use a three turn blood knot to attach the boom to the large ring on the ring swivel. Use another three turn blood knot to attach the other end of the boom material to the chod section. Pull it tight and you're nearly done. Cut a short length of bait floss and thread it through the rig ring. Next, thread your chosen hook bait onto the baiting needle Loop the needle over the floss and push the bait down the needle until it's tight against the rig ring. Take your lighter and burn the floss down. Then press the lighter against the pop-up and your bait will now be secured in place. To straighten out your rig, simply heat up a kettle and pull the rig tight whilst holding it over the steam. Anglers often like to keep the chod section of the rig curved to improve the hooking capabilities. Now that you've finished tying the rig, you need to test it to see if it sits nicely in the water. Ideally, you want your rig to sink slowly in the lake and settle down over any debris. Add some rig putty until you get the rig sinking slowly. There you have a finished stiff hinge rig. Now, if this whole process seems a little bit complicated for you, then do not fear. Uh, ready tied uh, stiff hinge rigs are available in most tackle shops. Just one point of note on the boom section of the rig, the bit that connects the, the chod uh, to the lead arrangement. Uh, for this demonstration we used fluorocarbon material which is really good especially in clear water because it's very transparent hard for the fish to see it also means that should your rig be picked up uh, you know uh, if, a, if a bird picks up your rig or if a carp sucks it in and spits it back out again that rig because it's so stiff it's going to fall back out and reset each time it gets taken so you could have your bait picked up three or four times and it always falls back down nicely um, away from your lead rather than it crumpling 
uh, and landing in a, in a tangled mess. But there are certain times where we wouldn't advise using fluorocarbon as your boom section. For example, if you're fishing in quite coloured water, the fluorocarbon isn't going to give you the advantage of transparency that it does in clear water. Uh, if the lake you're fishing is also kind of silty and soft, your lead clip might plunge into that silt. Should it plug a little bit too deep in the silt, a stiff fluorocarbon boom is just going to end up poking up out of the silt unnaturally, up at a weird angle. And you don't really want that. So if it is a bit silty on the lake that you're fishing, if the water is kind of coloured, then I'd actually advise, rather than using fluorocarbon as a boom, instead use some coated braid like this dark matter. The dark matter coated braid, whilst it's still stiff enough to kick the rig out, has a little bit of uh, suppleness to it too. So if your lead does plug a little bit deep into the silt, it's not going to stick up totally unnaturally. It will sort of contour to the lake bed and present nicely, even if it is a little bit silty on the lake you're fishing. When it comes to what hook bait to use with the stiff hinge rig, that's kind of up to you. Have a little play with different colours and flavours of pop-up and see what works on your local waters. We tend to start off with just a standard 15mm yellow pop-up, but if there's lots of crayfish around and they're like nibbling your pop-ups down or whittling them, whittling them away, sorry, uh, there's no reason why you can't use a buoyant plastic bait or even some like buoyant sweet corn. Something like that may well work uh, just as well. Whatever hook bait you end up using with this rig, just make sure that it's suitably buoyant as you want the hook to be held up, uh, popped up off the bottom in that sort of claw shape ready to hook into any, uh, any carp that takes your bait. Before casting out, you'll just need to decide what lead system you're going to use the rig on. Uh, we have a video on our channel that talks all about lead arrangements, when to use the lead clip, when to use the inline, when to use the helicopter uh, lead setup. Um, most people who use the stiff hinge rig tend to use it on a, a lead clip or on a helicopter presentation. That just tends to be what, you know, what most people go for um, and, uh, and prefer. Fishing the hinge stiff rig is normally associated with uh, a scattering of boilies as your loose feed. The reason for this is because when you feed um, with a, a relatively wide spread of boilies, it tends to encourage the fish to move between uh, eating baits. Um, it's slightly hard to get your head around at first, but if you imagine fish feeding on a small patch of pellets, or small particle baits, they're not moving around very much, they're just eating it a little bit at a time and not traveling between mouthfuls. With a spread of boilies, they'll be picking one boilie up, moving along, picking up another one, moving along, and that is where um, this you know, feeding approach comes into its own. Because they'll come down and take a bait and move off to the next, they'll tighten up the hook link quicker and get hooked when they take your popped up bait. To bait up in this way, we like to use a catapult at short to medium range. It creates a, a nice spread of bait and you can get out quite a lot at a time through the catapult. However, if you're trying to go long range, you know, 80, 90 yards or something, uh, you'll struggle with a catapult. So we like to use a throwing stick uh, when baiting up at longer, uh, longer distances. Occasionally, and especially in winter when the fish aren't feeding so much, you may want to use the stiff hinge rig as a, a way of fishing single hook baits with no loose feed around it at all. The popped up bait sits nicely off the bottom right in the view of a carp and sometimes in the winter when they're not really feeding, that just bright pop up cast in front of them. You know, you might see one show, make a cast, get it as close as you can to it uh, and that can be enough just to tempt a fish into sucking the bait in even if they're not really feeding. So to summarise, the Stiff Hinge Rig is a very popular and very successful rig that's caught a lot of carp for a lot of different anglers. However, for us, and one point that I haven't even mentioned until now, it's just the fact that it barely ever tangles. And for us, that's, that's a winner. Um, a rig that doesn't tangle, a rig that's almost always presented when it hits the lake bed is absolutely brilliant. Now, if you want to learn um, some more about carp fishing, do feel free to check out our playlist that's on screen now. That, um, that playlist is just full of all of our carp fishing videos, which I hope will help you put more carp on the bank this year. Thanks for watching.